Um, today, we are going to be talking about multi-style strings. Uh, we're going to be talking about formal education using uh, string instruments, electric string instruments, acoustic string instruments, all that stuff. So that what is the role of school in the arts? Well, it's to prepare students for the workforce. You can kind of learn this stuff on your own over decades if you want, or you can learn a lot more efficiently under a teacher. The problem with this is that a lot of modern conservatories are not preparing students for the 21st century. They're preparing students for a world that doesn't exist anymore. So in multi-styles is a thing that most string players, I know a ton of working string players, and every one of them has to know how to play classical music. They have to know how to play jazz. They have to know how to play R&B. They have to know how to play rock. They have to know how to play country, worship styles. You're gonna have to know how to play all of these different styles of music most music schools don't teach this. NJCU does. New Jersey City University teaches this. They are preparing students to actually go out there and make a living in the world that is. So the problem is that a lot of conservatories, the teachers can't teach the stuff that they don't know. They're not out there gigging. They're not reading chord charts. They're not improvising because they don't know how. The faculty at NJCU actually does know. There's, uh, there's a number of Grammy winners here. Martha's there, Joe Denenzone is there, for my money, one of the greatest electric violinists alive right now. Uh, Regina Carter, Grammy winner, Jeremy Cattell, incredible player. All of these fantastic people are teaching at this school. And if you think about in the arts, contacts are key. By the time you get out into the gigging world, it's gonna be really helpful if you know a bunch of people that can help you advance your career. NJCU is minutes from one of the hottest music scenes on the planet. They're just outside Manhattan. I don't know what else you could look for in a school if you're thinking about you want to learn how to play multiple styles of music and prepare yourself to like enter the world of musicians that are making a difference out there. We got Martha Mook with us. How's it going, Martha? I am great. I am great. I'm on a little bit of a uh, vacation, well, sort of working vacation out in East Hampton in the beautiful studio of my friend Cynthia Daniels. And that's her, that's her Grammy over there. Mm. And, um, and so I'm just delighted to be talking with you, Matt. Happy New Year to everybody. What's up? Likewise, Electric yeah. violin shop, friends and family and, and all that. And um, I'm just so happy to be here and be, be pushing forward into the new year. Um, and and sharing some some words of, of wisdom and Matt, I mean you pretty you you got it you, you nailed what the score is here. So um, I'm happy to answer any any questions, do some more talking, share some some love, tell you my story, whatever you whatever you want to know. Yeah, well, Let's tell us it. about the program and how you started it and uh, and why you got this idea to do all this. Yeah, so. Um, it's a, it's a program that I actually, while I was becoming a professional and, and all the experience kind of wished I had all along. And it was like a, um, everything that I, that I have learned up to this point, and now, um, you know, I gave it away how, how old I'm going to be. <laughs> Been around for a little bit. Uh, so I have a lot of experience. Um, and, but it, m most of it was not taught at school. Um, I mean, I do have a master's degree in viola performance. So I have, that was all classical training. Um, and so I kept that path, be, you know, became a, a professional. So I've got the skills I play with orchestras and Broadway and tours, etc. cetera. Um, and then along the way I encountered the music of Jean-Luc Ponty and that changed my world. And you know, it's another one of these things. You don't know what you're missing until you know what you've been missing. And, you know, my mind just blew like, wow, I never knew that a string player could sound like that or could play like that. And and that was back in the 80s when I found out and he'd already been doing it for numbers of years. So um, that just went exploring in that direction and the direction of electric strings. And um, it was sort of or organic. I didn't study... I didn't study composition. I didn't study jazz. I didn't study anything other than the viola performance. And so a lot of it is, it, it's all by experience and hook or by crook. So um, 
the idea behind the program at NJCU is when I was asked about four years ago, it was just a simple, <laughs> innocent question by the chair of the department. <laughs> can you, can you, you know, help us grow the string department? Because there was no, once had been a thriving string department and it, and it uh, hadn't been for a while. And I thought about it and I said, I can do that. But since we're starting from scratch, I, I came up with this idea of multi-style strings and I put a proposal together and a whole write-up and um, I got the green light to move forward with it. Little did I know I was also going to have to actually create a curriculum of a master's degree, uh, which has been uh, running for two years now, and the Bachelor of Arts degree, which is going to start next fall. Um, oh, nice. So I've been learning. I've been, it's my educational experience keeps going too. Um, but what I've done is I don't teach all these styles, but I'm, I'm a conduit to, um, to, to making those connections. So I call all my, a lot of my friends who are experts in the different styles um, to be part of the team. And they love the, the idea that we're doing this at a public university, New Jersey City University. It's, a, it's, it's um, part of the state university system of New Jersey. So it's a it's a public university, and um, so the you know tuition is 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 comparable to uh, you know community college or whatever. We're right across the river from New York City, so all my students you know they're they're gigging, they're going to concerts all the time. Twenty minutes, they're in town, um, and the idea that we're also in a very demographically diverse neighborhood in Jersey City. And so um, we're really starting to to reach out. I've got I've got a bunch of international students now and we're as word is getting out and they're seeing and they're hearing wh what the students are playing and um, I mean, it's just so much to 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 talk about. So they they come in a lot of them have maybe classical training and I've got a room full of electronic gear, most a lot, a lot of even tied gear, and some Yamaha and some other uh, boss units, and and um, shout out those I'm, sponsors. I'm, that's right, <laughs> that's right. Um, that I mean, because it's that becomes part of your sound. It becomes part of it's an extension of your instrument, you know. Um, and uh, you know, the students come in and even if I have some that have never worked with electronics before and um, now I can't get them out of the room. And I have to say, like, what they're doing in, since September, some of the, the first year students since September, it's like each month has been like 10 years of what I did. They're, that's how fast they're learning. They're looping. They're, they're using um, uh effects there and they're being so creative in the use of it i mean i i just sh show them a little bit of what i do and then they just take it and run with it and it's that's exciting to me yeah um and so um it's and and it's all it's evolutionary um you know it's it's very it's based on how the students that come in what are they geared to what are they interested in um, I have them, uh, I have Regina Carter, Jeremy Kittle, Dave Egger, Joe Denenzone, and, and his Sweet Plantains string quartet. We're opening up the, uh, the program now to include guitar and other string instruments. Oh, nice. Besides violins, violas, cellos, and bass, um, as well as harp. Um, and we have um, Edmar Castaneda is an amazing um, jazz, Latin jazz harpist. He's on the faculty, and um, we've got an incredible classical guitar faculty and jazz guitar faculty, and now we're going to start to bring in the multi-style faculty. I've been talking to some of my friends to come in and do some uh, to some sessions, like Vernon Reed is really mm. interested to come in. He lives across the bridge, too. So I love him. He's what, a, what a kind um, soul. I love him so much. Oh, he's he's fabulous, fabulous. Um, I've been talking to Matt Beck, who's also... Um, and touring with Rob Thomas and, and just, he plays all styles and he's amazing. And so we're really, it, it's really, it's growing. Um, 
and it's exciting to be, you know, at the at the the roots of it. So thank you for you know being part of the voice that is amplifying multi style strings. Um, it's the it's the first of its program here at New Jersey City University, but I think it's starting to catch on. It's you know I. I definitely called from from some of the programs that were out there, and, and definitely uh, Berkeley College of Music has been one one of my inspirations there. And, and there's some other wonderful programs. I and mean, I took little bits and uh, and pieces from from those programs. Some of the um, musicianship, the entrepreneurial musician, those programs, because it's really important that we not only know how to play our instruments really well, but also how to sell ourselves, how to market ourselves. Absolutely. And, and so um, all of the students, they're, they're all doing different things on social media. I'm, I'm, um, they're, they're taking business courses. They're, um, they're, they're playing out there. Some of them are going to be playing with me cutting room um, in February. Oh, awesome. And uh yeah, and so I'm. I bring in guest artists. Last year, I had um, my friend Razel, the amazing beatboxer, and we did a concert with him on campus and in the city. Uh, I have another friend of mine, um, a wonderful Tibetan musician, that's coming in to play with us in March. Um, so we're going to be doing the Tibet House concert at Carnegie Hall on March first, mm. and then he's going to come and do a concert with us on campus on the third. So. Um, Every chance I get to bring in different different artists, and it just enhances the experience. Um, Regina's going to join us for for our spring concert in April um, on campus. So, um, and anything can happen between now and then. I'm like, you know, I'm an improviser, so it's it's something that I am experienced at um, being very adaptable, and I could have all the plans. And the syllabus. But if I'm walking down the street and I see some amazing player, and I'm like, "Hey, are you busy at four o'clock? Can you come in and play for my class?" and and that's happened. I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of being um, where so you, you have, are, you right? Have to go with it. You have to allow yourself to go with it. And that's that's another thing that is different than a you know a conservatory scene. Right. And while you talked um, about your students gigging. You know, with the Rockstar Violinist podcast that you were on, we, we interview all these fantastic players. Most of them went to music school. And to a person, they're all like, no, my professors, if they found out I was gigging, they were threatened to kick me out of the school. And and I think it's just a very, very different mindset. Jim Moody is here, a good buddy of mine from, uh, from here in North Carolina, said he would have loved to have grown up with exposure to these types of educational opportunities. I think all of us would have. I wish that they were available when I was a kid. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, and I think I, part of it is not just having the the opportunity for the students, but but we're, we're sort of going in retrograde, because as you mentioned, the um, the string educators also there's a deficit there, and we we did, we talk about this all the time at ASTA, the American String Teachers Association, um, where they, they want to be able to teach different styles, but that's not, that hasn't been part of their training. So we're not just, we're, I'm trying to figure out how to also expand it so that it's teachers and teachers can, you know, for example, they come back to get their master's, a string teacher can come back and get their master's in multi-style strings. And and learn the you know the tools to um, not necessarily to play every single style, but to, to how to how to find uh, experts or how to find resources, and uh, not be afraid to plug in um, to use electronics to improvise. And um, you know, for every person that you say, can you improvise? Each person is, has their own method or their own philosophy. And so um, I don't just teach, it's not just the school of Martha Mook, you know, at NJCU. That's why I bring all the other um, the players that are amazing in their fields because everybody's adding to it. And I have a student that comes to study with me 
and I see that they, you know, they want to learn some, some more jazz, I'm going to say, go study with Regina next semester. Or they want to, you know, really delve into some, you know, rock and, and, and looping. And, and I'm like, go study with Joe Denon's on the following semester. You don't have to only study with me. I'm here. I'm going to guide you whether you're studying in my studio or not. And that's it. There's a lot of interchange of ideas. The students are constantly um, collaborating with each other. Uh, we just did juries, and I had um, uh, Ben Sutton, who's an amazing violinist, mm. and, and Benji Daniels, uh, amazing jazz electric bass guitar player. Um, and they just decided to put themselves together. They're calling themselves the Benjamins because they're both Benjamins. So it's kind of cool. But they didn't know each other from before and they have such a cool duo going on now that I think is going to, you know, keep expanding. And that's, that's what I love about it. It's making the connections and you never know by talking to someone or just say, Hey, let's, you know, let's, let's jam or let's try all these different styles. Last semester, each, each week I had um, a different artist come in. I had, I had Joe, I had, I had, um, uh, Jeremy, I had Dave, um, I had John Benitez, an incredible um, bass player, Latin jazz, uh, classical, all styles, and just sort of a taste test. And the feedback I got was, you, you know, it was like wonderful. Now we really want to dig in, and now we want to, you know, be working on charts and and um, to be, you know, to be performing that. So um, it's. I think the uh, the idea is to be versatile, to to have the resources, but also to be versatile to see who's in. And it, you know, it's not one one syllabus, one curriculum doesn't fit all. Right. And the group that I have this year may be totally different than the group I have in in the next year or two. And and I have to be ready to to um, to pivot to reframe. Uh, so that's my, you know, as the director of this program, um, and that's where I need to be sort of, in, you know, observing, always observing and listening. I always tell my students, um, talk to me. If you there's something that, that that's missing or you have an issue or something's going on, talk to me. And so they know they can. We got a uh, Raz um, is here, one of my favorite people. Um, she's, she hey, actually Raz. said, I may have actually studied music. If you guys don't follow Raz, you should I think she's got it. She's got a degree in from Stanford, I think in microbiology or something. She's one of them smart people. Um, but her question was, can you speak to the trends in teaching higher education that requires a master's degree? Do we feel like that narrows the field in higher ed? Uh, I want to make sure I get the question Correct. There's a, the question, do you need a master's degree to teach or why do you yeah, need a master's I degree? I think that's what she's asking. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, in, in higher ed education, this is uh, so to, to teach, for example, right? Mm -hmm. They um, higher ed, usually they like to see, a, you know, a Ph.D. or a DMA or all these initials after your after your name. And as a performing artist, that's that's not our um, necessarily our initial path, and so that's another thing I've I've had to navigate through that as well, to um, to liken the years of experience. I mean, I do have a master's degree. I got a master's degree uh, from the University of Massachusetts uh, in Amherst many years ago. Um, but I didn't go on to get my PhD or doctorate, but I, 30 years of experience, um, that, you know, that's sort of the, the equivalent of that. So if you ask the why, get, why get a master's degree? Well, that part of it is that will open up more doors towards teaching higher education. So if you want to even adjunct at most um, universities, you, the minimum you need is a, a master's degree or, you know, rock star status. Yeah. <laughs> well, Raz and has or that. Both. Yeah. So, um, so there's a lot of different, you know, um, 
can you can you learn all this stuff without going to a university to learn it? Well, um, yeah, you can, but it takes you 30 years to do it. And so if you have access to the resources that are at, on campus, um, I mean, I, I have a dedicated room and the, the students are in there all the time with all the gear. I have a green screen. I have got, I've got sound equipment. I've got instruments. And they're just experimenting 24 hours a day in there. They're, they're meeting, they're getting to work with these top-notch people and they're making connections and they're going into New York City and they're making connections. I've, you know, my students are, they're, they're down, uh, they going to, down to play in Atlantic City. They're playing in the city. They're in Philadelphia. They're all over the place. Um, so I'm not sure if I quite answered your question, Raz, but, uh, if you haven't something more specific, I'll be happy to, but I think the idea that you can find all these resources in this one location, or you can find how to access those, those resources. And if I have somebody come in and they want to study klezmer and I don't have anybody that's klezmer on the, on the faculty yet, I'll, you know, I'll call somebody like Alicia Spiegels or another friend of mine that's an amazing klezmer player. Or if somebody wants to study, you know, any other kind of um, style that maybe we we don't represent yet at the university, maybe African, I, I don't know, anything, we'll find we'll find somebody to study with, and that will enhance the landscape for everybody at the university. So um, it's that's exciting because I don't know. Uh, where where are we going to be in a couple of years and who else is going to be affiliated with us um, and making connections with other, you know, in uh, with other universities, with other in other countries. Um, I, I think, you know, the more that we talk with each other and collaborate, we're not comp we shouldn't be competitors. We're all, we all have something different to give. And. Um, but you know, if you you call me and you you're telling me something, and I think, well, you can be served better at this other institution. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna point you in that direction, or just like I'll point you in a direction of studying with one of the other teachers on the faculty because they're that's more of their um, wheelhouse than than mine. So um, yeah, as the dad of a, of I'm a trying, kid. My son is is a tenth grader this year, so we're not quite thinking about college, but soon. You know, it's it's a question I think a lot of parents are asking. I'm gonna pay a lot of money to have my kid in school, and and I think a lot of parents in the arts, they're like, well, you know, do you really need a music degree to to play music? And you don't. But the things that you can learn in music school, especially if you're in a program that actually prepares your kid to go make a living. And the people that you're going to be around, the resources that the university has versus maybe I'm just going to take some lessons or I'm going to kind of go down to the local dive bar and learn, which is what I did. Um, you know, I, the, the four year experience at NJC or the two year graduate experience or whatever it is, just the amount of intensity in that learning experience and the connections you can make, the faculty that you're around. You know, I think when you are talking about teaching kids how to use social media, how to do recording, how to get gigs, how to make connections. All these things are things that a lot of, like if you try to go to you know XYZ Conservatory, they're not teaching these things. And I think this is maybe gonna help parents that are a little bit skeptical about funding and arts education when everything seems to be pushing so hard towards STEM right now, which is also needed. I have an engineering degree, I think they're good things. But, you know, a parent who's a little hesitant to send their kid to an art school, um, I think is going to be encouraged by how much practical application there is. And all the faculty here are successful, professional gigging musicians. People who have been making a living in this business and making a good living in this business for quite some time. They can teach your kid how to do the same thing. Yes. And uh, I mean, that's. In a, in a in an environment like like at the university where you have access to these players, I mean, if you were going to do it on your own and study, and ask Regina Carter for private violin lessons or ask Jeremy Kittle for violin lessons, so you're going to pay the you know prime um, numbers, and you're 
and it'll be whatever once a month, once a, but you're not going to have the experience of continuing to work with them and, and have them be your coach in a chamber ensemble and have it be that kind of experience where, you know, when you're still in school, you can, I mean, a lot of them are, are working, but um, you have, you have that f- little more freedom to explore um, in other, in other directions. And I, I want to circle back also to the thing that I, that I really um, try to bring out is, is each person's individual creativity and what, where that can lead to. It's that, um, and uh, you know, some of them come in and they're, and they're, you know, players like, you know, orchestral players, a lot, a lot of times, um, you know, if you ask them to improvise, they'll put the book, the instrument down. Right. Cause it, playing something that comes right into their head or being creative, that's not what they've been to- taught, you know, in a conservatory situation, for example, or in, or even in a jazz program, but the, the um, the ability and the the resources and the space um, and I I make a safe space for the students to try things uh, and you you don't know what's going to happen and um, I mean that you try different tunings you try working with different electronics um, you try working, collaborating with somebody who you have nothing in common with. Oftentimes that's where the most amazing collaborations come, come out of. And, um, and I think, you know, if you, you see now that the, the groups that are really um, being successful are the ones that are there, there, there are string quartets for sure. But there's also um, ensembles that are different kind of instrumentations, and a lot of the players are also creating the music themselves, or they're writing, they're they're including multimedia, um, and I mean they have access to to so much more than you know than I had when I was going through school. Uh, we didn't have internet; yeah. I had to get up and change the channel of the TV. That's you know. right. We barely uh, had electricity <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> Uh, we had dial up, you know, <laughs> um, but it's re- we'll probably have dial up at coming back into it. I mean, rotary phones, that'll, that'll be cool. That's yeah. the next instrument, I guess. Vintage. Uh, anything that's, it, it's, it's possible. It's how you open yourself up to the possibilities. Um, and I, you know, when I have students and they're like, but, but that's not going to sound good or that's not, that's not in the right key or that's not. I'm like, well, that's okay. Try it. And you don't know where you're going to be able to, you know, to head to after that. Right. You might stumble. Um, Sometimes my bet. Yeah. No, I mean, I've had some of my most artistic moments have come out on, you know, and I'm on stage and I screw up a pedals change or something. And I'm like, well, okay, that wasn't the song I meant to do, but let's go in that direction. You might just land a gig with David Bowie. I have found that. (laughs) So. Uh, so that that is very much encouraged. I you know I have lights, I've got all kinds of lighting. But I'm so I, you know I um I did the I did a podcast uh, with the Andy Reiner and he called me the vibe wizard <laughs> um, because that's important. Yeah, you totally. know, and I yelled at him because he he had a he had a um um a lava lamp that wasn't working and I always have my lava lamp on and I've got all the the lights going on because it adds to the vibe. It just, I don't know, it adds to the creative flow. Absolutely. And I encourage that with my students, like turn out those fluorescent lights and, you know, make a vibe, make a vibe. And when they perform in the recital hall, which is, you know, just a typical recital hall, I'm like, take the lights, take the, the you know, the moving lights and, and, and they they do that now, and it makes such a difference. It's in, and it's it informs them, and it also informs the audience because it's always you know it's a give and take. It's communication. If they're giving out to the audience something that's a little bit different, the audience is going to experience it in a little different way. There's a reason that the big dogs are traveling around with ten semi trucks full of lighting gear. They're not doing it because they like spending money. So, and, and you don't have to, 
you know, spend millions of dollars on it. I'm, you know, I go, I go out to, I go to Costco and if they've got, you know, Christmas lights on sale or whatever <laughs> lights on sale, you, it doesn't take that much, right. it's, but to, to get that to the, to the next step. Right. So just to, to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And I mean, I, I actually do um, a show that is, that's um, a nod to David Bowie that's called igniting the imagination. And I have tidbits of him talking in interviews and saying things like, you know, if, if you're comfortable where you are, you're not, you're not going to be at your most creative. It's like, take a step a little bit further out into the deep end over your head. And that's where you're going to find your, your cre creativity is going to spark. You're going to have to, by necessity, in a way, right. kick in something that you didn't know you had, a resource that you didn't know you had inside. Jen has a question here. Uh, bachelor's and master's programs. You said you're starting the bachelor's yes. program this fall, right? Yes, the bachelor's program is starting up in fall of uh, 2023. So um, the... I, and I'm not sure if all the links are up yet on the website, but just email me if you're interested and I can, I can hook you up with the, with the information on that. Um, but it'd be the same kind of, same kind of deal where all these faculty members will be available and, um, and depending on who's there, we, we create multi-style um, ensembles and uh, orchestras. How cool would that be? Have no a multi-style orchestra. No yeah. doubt. With, with electric instruments as well and using, and, you know, um, and because there's no, we're not judging, you know, we, we are, of course, teaching skills and you do have to have some skills coming in and be serious about that because this is not a joke uh, program. Um, and, you know, you still need to have your, your student cap on and you have to take a certain number of liberal arts courses and math, you know, and math and whatever. Um, but uh, if you want to know what the curriculum would be, just to email me or I'll throw up a link to that. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's, it's going to be the coolest, as I say, that's the coolest string program on the planet. Raz I think actually another, in the universe. Raz had another question. Uh, and this yeah. is a great question. Do you are there new trends or directions coming up in the industry that you are getting exposed to from your students? You know, kids know stuff that we don't know. For sure, um, I am getting schooled every day. Uh, I have actually, I have a group, I have an ensemble. They came in as a preformed ensemble called the Sci-Fi Ensemble, and they specialize in gaming music mm. and vid video games. And, and film music. And, um, and I've been learning a lot just th through them. And um, indeed, all the, all the students that come in, I've always, I'm always listening to them too. Cause I don't, like I said, I don't know everything. I'm just, I'm just like, yes, you can. That's my, you can do it. And the, the opportunities are there and the possibilities are there. So, um, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm going to say that that probably, a, you know, a good number of my students can probably play circles around me in whatever styles they're playing. Um, and and it's and it's great. But, you know, also teaching teaching them other things that they may not have had on their on their path if they hadn't come to this program. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's like my professor tells me, he's like, I don't, I don't care what you play. You play what you want to play, but you've got to play it at a degree level. You've got to be able to play it at a level where a school would give you a degree to play it at that level. Right. And, and that's why also I have a, you know, built up a team of faculty that I'm always conferring with them and I'm asking them what, what can we do next? Or what should we do next? What can we do better? How can we, you know, tighten this up? Um, cause I realize my, my, what I tend to do is give a lot of freedom cause that's what, that's my approach to creativity. Um, but a lot of students don't know what to do. And when you give them too much freedom, there, there's no place, there's no starting place. So I'm learning, I'm learning how to be a better teacher as well from 
both my, you know, from my faculty colleagues as well as from my students. And they, they've definitely, we sat down at the end of last semester and, and I said, you know, tell me what did you get out of the semester? What would, you know, where would you like to go? What would you like to, you know, go for, for next semester? And we'll make it work if it's not exactly there in the syllabus or the curriculum already. We, we're, you know, that's part of allowing the creativity to be part of the program as well as what, you know, what's in print. So, um, or being able to expand it. It's all organic. Well, that's fantastic. I, I love this whole thing. Like Raz said, I wish this had been a thing that had been around when I was going to school. I may have changed my mind about what I studied. Well, you know, it's it exists now, and I hope that it, it, it's going to exist in other, uh, continue to grow. Um, at especially at New Jersey City University, as long as I'm here. <laughs> um, but I think I think it's also it's a nod to um, you know ac academia is like a, sometimes a museum. Right? It's slow to en uh, embrace new ideas, and you have to I have to give credit to the people that have given me the support and seeing that this is something this is a new idea. They're taking a chance on it, but it's whether whatever you call it, visionary or, or uh, um, experiment, it's not experimental. It, it's what what you need. It's the tools that you need to have as a professional player today. That's what I see. Um, and, you know, it's something especially we learned the last three years when, you know, we were all locked in our rooms and not able to go out and play um, and work. And everything was done via this format. And electronically uh, or sending charts back and forth um you have to you have to be able to adapt and um and like i said you know less judging more listening and respecting um and uh seeing seeing who's out there talking to who's out there play with everybody yeah, as a person who came um, from a STEM field, my undergrads in chemical engineering, it's it's comical to me to think that the same institutions that are pushing their STEM fields to be at the forefront of cutting technology, right? When I got my engineering degree, we weren't working on slide rules. We're working on $50,000 computers because we wanted to be at the very cutting edge of technology. And we wanted to be learning all the newest, latest things that underneath that same umbrella will be an arts department that wants to believe we're still in the 1800s. So it, I think a lot of times so now the art departments are starting to catch up to the idea that, you know, this is a rapidly advancing world and we've got to be part of it. Yeah. And I, I you know, um, collaboration is, is the, is a is a key and not just with music not just with other musicians but collaborate with visual artists with other with with dance with multimedia with with scientists i'm you know i, I collaborate with every, anybody um just explore the unknown and that's how you get to the that's how you get to the next step in in evolution and, and creativity um you know, we've, we we did things with the with the art department this year, and when I I hear an artist that's coming in, I take my students to go listen to the art, the artists talk about their work, and create. Um, but so tell you tell me, Matt, from from your background in this from the STEM background, what are you, what are you bringing to the, the music field or the creative field from that? What or where's the flow through that? I'm curious. Yeah. So I, th I think a lot of it's in the process and that, you know, when I, when I get a new pedal, if I get a new helix or if I start messing with the, uh, the, the brand new pedal from Eventide, the, the H90, right. Um, that I, I'm not intimidated about going in and programming in that or developing new signal paths in that, or thinking, gosh, you know, if I split my signal, could I send half of it this way and half of it that way? And what are sort of the electrical implications of when I split a signal? And so a lot of it has to do on the tech side. Um, and then again, a lot of it is just the process. 
you know, that scientific method of experimentation. Okay, I tried these things. Uh, well, if, what if I go in this direction? How does that all scientifically work? Um, so, I, yeah, I think it's a lot of it is just sort of a mindset and a process that, that the STEM fields help you bring in. Okay. Yeah. We do have um, some new viewers here, so I want to go back and I want them to know about your concert that's coming up. This You've got a 60 Years On concert. Tell us tell us more about how this concert is, is going to go down in New York. Well, so... Uh, okay, no surprise. I've been an Elton John fan since I was <laughs> in middle school. Um, and so I had to wait for all this time to have a 60 years on. Uh, and guess what? Because that's where I am in my, in my humanness. Um, and so I'm embracing it. I'm embracing my 60 years on. And so the, uh, the, it's going to be a celebration, my birthday celebration. It's going to be a concert. It's also where we're raising funds for uh, scholarships for the NJCU multi-style strings program. Um, and some of my students will be playing on it as well. Um, it is, it's Elton John themed, so we're all gonna be decked out in, in whatever crazy costumes, wardrobe, glasses. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what I can call from my closets. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, some surprise guests as well. I'll be I'll be doing some uh, performing uh, on February twelfth. It uh, kicks off at the doors open at one, I think, at the Cutting Room, which is Thirty uh, Second Street and Park Avenue. It's a really it's a very cool uh, music venue in New York, one of the hot spots in New York City. So um, that'll that's going on February. Um, also check out the the uh, Tibet House concert at, on March 1st at Carnegie Hall that Philip Glass produces. Laurie Anderson is going to be performing and, and New Order and Patti Smith and a bunch of other t uh, wonderful artists. So, um, and I'm, I've am i been part of that scene for the last 20 years with my string quartet. Um, we started playing there in 2001 with David Bowie. Mm. And so we've become the house band, the house string quartet and Patty Smith's band is the house band. And we all, you know, if you, if there's, that's multi-style and nobody's judging or saying, Hey, wait a minute, but you're, you know, and all the big rock, you know, stars and, and, um, people that come in, they want to play with the string quartet. And we're like, we'll play with you and we can improvise. Um, I've even gone in, you know, I've known Philip, Philip Glass for many, many years. And it was one, one year we came in and he said to me, okay, I'd like you guys to, uh, to improvise with me when I play my etude number 10. And we did it live at Carnegie Hall. We'd had no rehearsal. That's awesome. And we improvised with him. Um, and so, and that's part of, that's, that's the idea that we have this, um, this background and 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 uh, the resources to draw upon that we can do that. We walk in and and say, okay, I'll I'll jam with Philip Glass in the stage of Carnegie Hall. Okay, yeah, I'll just come into Carnegie Hall and do that. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So as people who are, you know, we're we're sort of getting into the time now where where kids are applying for for school next year. If uh, somebody's interested in coming to NJCU and learning. Uh, in the multi styles program, where would they start? Um, easiest thing would just reach out to me directly, and so I'm I'm all over Facebook. We have a, a Facebook page, NJCU Multi Style Strings page, that's got uh, videos and things of what the students have been doing, as well as announcements. Um, my email is mmook at njcu.edu. Um, you'll put up a link for that. Yep. Right. And um, that will the the link to actually apply will be up very shortly. But um, I have all the information to give out. And if you just have any questions at all, whether you're, you know or you want to just pass it along, or you're interested, or you know a student that's interested, um, happy to answer any questions at all. Um, and I always tell my students that even when 
you graduate or we, you know, or time. I, I do a lot of mentorship programs as well. And I always tell them, I will always be there for you. If you have a question, you can always feel like you can come back and, and ask me. Um, and so I think that just having that communication is, is really important. So um, feel free, even if you think it's a silly question, um, get in touch. Happy to, happy to give you a silly answer. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for spending some time with us and uh, get back to your va working vacation or whatever it is that you're doing, hanging out with Grammys. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I don't go anywhere without this. So. Right. It's, you know, okay, vacation. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm about to turn around and do some work in the studio. Yeah, so. rub that Grammy This on has you. been maybe, awesome. Maybe Matt. it's contagious, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. And, and um, uh, just so much love out to you. Violin Shop, boy, you guys have, have just been a stalwart in this in our industry for so long and, and so grateful. And I um, I, I forward a lot of people over to you because you, you, you're so you have so full of knowledge as well as having the gear. That's so important to our industry. We're full of something, yeah. Yeah, you certainly <laughs> are. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much, and best of luck uh, on all the programs and stuff that you're doing. I won't see you before your concert, but I'll see. I guess I'll see you in Orlando in March, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking yeah. forward oh, to I, and the thing is, um, South by Southwest got an earful and, and they've invited me to come out and do a, a session out at the at their education um, conference. Oh, so beautiful. I'm going heading out to heading out there to Austin and before before I see you in uh, in Asta in one Orlando. of my favorite towns. I love so, Austin, Texas. Yeah, I'm excited about that. South by Southwest, it's been on my radar for a long time. So, and I'm bringing some students out with me to play. Amazing. And they're they're really excited. So, so all right, you guys come to Jersey City, That's New right. Jersey. Come study with Martha. Learn all the things. Learn all the things. Do all the things. Go into the city. We'll get talk. some good pizza. In this a minute, is what, get some good pizza. Ah, uh, the best pizza and bagels. Oh yes, sir. I turned my daughter on to, on to New York bagels. I had her up there uh, a couple of months ago. We were just hanging out and turned her on to bagels. And she, she's never going to be the same. You can't go back. There's no going back once you've had New York bagels. That's right. Yeah. Well, so, see, there's, thank there's you so much, my dear. Right there. It's been such a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Martha. Take care, everybody.